is Hallie. Welcome to my ottoman. Because it is fall, I am doing the Hocus Pocus book tag, which I found on the lairofbooksblog.com. This isn't like a booktube tag, but it's still a book tag. Speaking of Hocus Pocus though, I bought part of the ColourPop collaboration they did with Hocus Pocus, and I'm wearing one of the lip creams right now. I was like, what better time than, well, procrastinating than to do a this sentence is going nowhere so I'm just gonna do the tag number one a great trilogy you are asking the right girl I mean could it be anything else fuck shit other than chaos walking I mean it's always chaos walking it's never twins it's always chaos walking it's never twins is that from Sherlock middle school me possessed me for a second so these are great i talked about them a bunch in my meteor book check-in they're about a guy named todd and he's got a dog and i love the dog the dog's name is manchi and he's wonderful he's so wonderful they live on this alien planet where all the men can hear each other's thoughts and then he and manchi stumble upon a place of complete silence a lot happens like that's like chap five chapters of this but and this is like a 1500 pages total next one is a book with a truly evil female villain fucking Coraline right like Coraline the other mother is creepy as fuck she's evil she's pure evil and I don't say that lightly I, mean, I don't think anyone is pure evil, but she's not a person, so. Fuck you, other mother. I should really stop flipping off the camera. <laughs> a book that uncannily attracts children. I'm gonna say anything by Stephen King, because <laughs> that sounds so weird. But my best friend and I both got into Stephen King way too young. <laughs> I didn't actually get into it that young. I was like 12. But um, they got into Stephen King when they were four. So I'm gonna say Stephen King. That or Jane Austen. Both of those really attract children despite being written for adults. A book that's just plain silly. Sorry, I have so many. <laughs> anyway, a book that's just plain silly would be A Whole Nother Story by Dr. Cuthbert Soup. I believe that is a pen name, but you know. I could be wrong. Stranger things have happened. I was straight for 13 years. <laughs> I was best friends with the most beautiful, kind, amazing girls on the planet. And I was like, I only like men. Happy Pride. Yes, October is the second Pride month. Halloween is... It's Pride and Fall with tiny pumpkins. A white woman's Instagram. So yeah, Dr. Cuthbert Soup wrote this wonderful book about this family. And it's a son, a daughter, and a son. And then their dad. And their dad has invented a time machine. And there are evil people back here who are after the time machine. And the younger son has a sock puppet. I can't remember what the sock puppet's name is. I haven't read this in years. And then they have a dog named Pinky. Pinky is bright pink. The name is unrelated. The, the name Pinky was given, this is how you give something, it was given to the dog before it became pink. A book that is trying really hard to be cool but doesn't always succeed. Oh honey, I'm gonna say anything by John Green but especially looking for Alaska. I can't believe this has a medal on the cover. I don't like John Green's writing. He's a fine history teacher but like God. He is so pretentious and sexist and annoying. Like I genuinely can't handle the way he writes. To say that I had low expectations would be to underestimate the matter dramatically. Fuck you. Sorry. For a book that isn't afraid to tell it like it is, I'm going to say Luster by Raven Leilani. This might be the best book I've read all year. I don't know yet because the year hasn't ended, but this was so good so good it's about a black woman a young black woman named Edie 
and she enters a relationship with a man who is married, who is in an open marriage, and gets messy and complicated, especially when she moves in with him to mentor his teenage daughter, who is an adopted black girl. He is white. He and his wife are white. So, that's... It was so beautifully written. It's only like 230 pages, but it, every single one of those is filled with the most beautiful words in existence. Like, the word choice was so incredible. And it was so real and raw. And I just felt her. I'm, I'm white, obviously, but like I felt her experience so much. Everyone should read this, unless you were triggered by miscarriages. Next, a book series that just won't die. For this one, I'm going to say The Hunger Games. <laughs> I like The Hunger Games. I really do. I like the first three books, but holy shit. I haven't actually read A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I don't know a single person I trust who liked it, so. I mean, Finch might like it, but Finch watches passion flicks for fun, so. I trust them very deeply. I trust them with my life. I don't trust them with book recommendations important difference. Finch is my best friend, by the way, if you didn't know. You should all know that. I love Finch. Go Finch. The fighting Finches. <laughs> Any of my favorite murder fans out there? Yes, I'm standing sideways. This is really uncomfortable. Anyway. Why didn't I just sit down? A book with a character that's dumb as a rock. Twilight. For those of you who are not aware, who are blissfully unaware, I read all the Twilight books last year, and one of them this year, and they were so fucking awful. Uh, my videos on those aren't out yet, but they are. Go I hope they are peak when they happen. I, I personally think it's some of my best work. Bella is so fucking dumb. Everyone is dumb, except Alice. She's too smart. It. She has all the brain cells. A book or series you wish you could resurrect. I'm not quite sure what this question is asking me. Like bring back into popularity? If it is one I wish I could bring back into popularity, I'm going to say from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frank Weiler, I think everyone of every age should read this, but especially girls between the ages of like seven and 12. I read this for the first time when I was eight. So perfect age. It just really resonated with me. This is probably in my top five favorite books of all time. It is in my top five favorite books of all time. It might be in my top three. I think it's fourth, but yeah. It's a book that's not so bad as people make it out to be. This might be particular to my friend group because most people think this book is very good, but I'm gonna say The Kite Runner. None of my friends like this book. I don't like the content, but I think the writing is beautiful. I don't think it was boring. One of my friends thinks it was very boring. I didn't, I didn't find it boring. I found it introspective. I don't like the protagonist. He sucks. For a book with a mind of its own, I'm going to say The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It feels like, like you know where the book is gonna go. You know the story of Achilles and Patroclus and the Trojan War. I do, at least. But like most people going into this know the story. But the way it takes you on that journey is so interesting. And it feels like, like the, not the narrator, really because there isn't really a narrator but like the, the whoever is telling the story is like a character in and of themselves i was a greek mythology kid i i got into greek mythology and then percy jackson i know i'm in the minority there but i loved greek mythology i loved percy jackson still do so i i had to love this it was like a rule for a book with a cameo i'm going to say my most recent read malibu rising which has uh, name drops of famous people from the, the 70s and 80s and I believe also is ha it, like is connected to another of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid's books yes that was correct thank you for watching me be this way and as always be safe and break the rules